Ready, set, go! You've got a brand new business idea and you are ready to run with it. It's either a new product or a new service and you're ready to hit the pavement, get out there into those networking events, put out some ads and get onto social media and really explode onto the business scene. Congratulations, that's an amazing feeling. It's a wonderful feeling. And many entrepreneurs are so super excited about that. I, I was been there, done that. I know what it feels like. The wonderful thing is that we usually often see initial success. Our friends are supporting us, our family is supporting us, the people who know us are supporting us, and we're thinking, yay, we got a great idea here. This is gonna take off. I'm gonna make lots of money from my new business, and away you go. Then reality hits. Hi, I'm Susan Friesen with eVision Media and today's video e-tip is all about lessening that reality into something that creates a business that is successful for you and it starts all by doing this one simple thing and that is defining your ideal client before you hit the road and get out there and really push your new business venture. Now I know I've talked a lot about this in the past, it's something that I keep talking about over and over again and I'm sure a lot of business coaches talk about it, a lot of other marketers talk about it and the reason why we're always talking about it is because it is so super important. The reason why it's important is because after that initial success that you've realized from your new business, then when reality hits, then all of a sudden you're going, how come the phone isn't ringing anymore? How come I'm not making any more sales? What went wrong? And then you start going into this nosedive of, okay, I guess my product or service isn't really that good enough, and then you quit. So in order to avoid that from happening, what I encourage you to do is, while you're in that excitement phase of really getting excited about your new venture, still go out and network, still talk to your family and friends, that's really super important, but at the same time, time, I want you to do your due diligence and figure out super clearly who your ideal client is. So to do that, you want to think about who do you best serve? Who is it that would be your ideal client? And I'm not saying who is it that would buy my product or my service or who could use my product or service. It's who you would ideally want to work with. So let's talk in generalities as far as somebody who provides a service. Ensuring that they breathe is not a good enough definition, right? There's lots of different breathing people on the planet. So you need to narrow that down, right? So one of the things to narrow that down is their geographics. Do they need to be locally based in your geographic area or can they be worldwide? But worldwide doesn't exist, does it? If you are an English speaking person, then you're not gonna be targeting people who don't speak English, right? So think about that. Think about in terms of, okay, really, realistically, worldwide, what does that mean? Which countries could I be also targeting aside from my country that I'm, that I'm already living in? So the other thing to take into consideration is their income level. Are they low income, middle of the road income, or are you gonna go after the affluent crowd? Very important distinction because every segment is going to want to hear a different message from you that will resonate with them. You're not going to say the same thing to a low income group of people that you would be saying to an affluent group of people. There, there's two completely different messages that they need to hear in order to be buy in to what you're selling. So aside from thinking about those demographics of who your ideal client is, the other thing that you want to be thinking about is what kind of challenge or problem are you solving for them. What is it that your product or service is going to help them in some way? And it's super important to really think about that. As an example, if you sell a weight loss pro program or a, you know some sort of a weight loss program, then just targeting people who say to themselves, I need to lose weight, may not be the way to go. Instead, the person that would best benefit from your product or service might be somebody who is not really thinking in terms of them being overweight. They might be thinking, gosh, I have really sore knees, or um, my arthritis is really flaring up, or something along those lines that, yes, it might be because they are overweight, but in their mind, they're thinking, my immediate problem is that my knees are hurting. How can you help me with that? 
that. And so that's the marketing message that you want to zero in on. And then the other thing is, is that are they actually willing to pay for your product or program? That is a super important thing to think in mind. Uh, a prime example of this, and unfortunately I see it often, is when somebody comes up with a product or program that is meant for young mothers. They could very much use it. There's absolutely nothing wrong with what is being offered, but young mothers are spending their day 24 hours a day thinking and taking care of their young kids. Are they really ready to spend money on themselves to overcome whatever challenge it is that they're facing? Yes, of course there are some. They're certainly going to really benefit from what it is that you provide them, but you need to get past that block that they might have in their minds that they are not ready to spend money on themselves, that money is better spent on their kids or paying bills or buying groceries or what have you, right? So think about that. The other thing is, is do you want to have clients that will refer people to you? So what kind of client looks like that? And I can say like eVision Media was built on referrals for the last 19 years. It's, we're, we're referral based, 90, 95% of our clients come from referrals. So when I go to do our marketing, I want to be, attract more people like that who are so super happy with the service that we provide them. And I need to figure out why is it that they're so happy about our service and then enhance that in our marketing efforts so that I attract more people who are going to be just like them and refer others to us. And then it keeps going over and over again, right? And finally, you also want to think about in terms of relatability. Are they going to relate to you? Now, thankfully, most entrepreneurs come up with a product or program or service that they themselves would purchase. So in a weird way, they are their own ideal target market, their own ideal client. And so that makes your job a little bit easier because you can kind of analyze yourself. But what if you came up with a product or program that is meant for a totally different generation? What kind of message are you going to need to come up with in order to resonate with them so that they resonate with you? You have to be believable. They need to trust that you are the best choice for them or they're going to go to your competitor who is relaying the proper message that will give them the idea that yes, this is exactly what I need. So before you develop your website, create your brand, get your logo, even, even before creating business cards, definitely go out, do your networking, do your market research, find out where that interest is, but then define that ideal client as your next step. And I know like when we develop brands for clients, that's the very first thing I do is I sit down with the client and we go through a series of questions to help them define who their ideal client is. And then we take that and use that as our blueprint for their logo, their business branding, their business cards, and of course their website and their marketing message. So it's kind of serves as a nucleus as to all of the different marketing that has to go on from there. So do your due diligence, do that first before, um, cre before investing in anything to do with your business. And if you're not sure, many new entrepreneurs aren't sure, then that's the time that you definitely don't do any investing in your business and just get out there and network and talk ask people questions, get to know the market and find out if there really is a need for your product or service before you invest in any time, effort or money on creating it. Make sure that there's somebody out there who's willing to spend money on you and then you will have not wasted any of your time and you will have an amazing uh, service or product or program for your ideal client. So that's it for today's e-tip. If you have any questions at all about defining your ideal client, please leave a message below. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please go ahead and subscribe to this channel so that you can get first notice every week when I post a new video e-tip specific for entrepreneurs and small business owners to help them build their business. And that's it. I'll talk to you next time. Bye for now.